The length of the thread must not exceed 7 mm. Longer threads can cause massive damage to the housing, which is why we recommend using an original Seachem M8 ball with the correct measurements. In order to take off the protection ring, turn it counterclockwise by applying a little pressure. In order to mount the protection ring, fit it onto the bayonet until it snaps into place and turn it over the resistance. In this position, the ring is firmly connected with the housing and cannot be pulled off anymore. To connect a fiber optical cable, simply plug one end into the fiber optical socket of the flash and the other one into the socket on the housing. In order to use a synchro cable with your equipment, plug the cable into the S6 socket of your C-Flash 60D and tighten the seal properly. Repeat this action at the S6 socket on the front side of your housing. To open the battery container, unlock the cap by turning the knob from the lock to the open position and pull it out with a tilting movement. In case there are batteries in the device, the battery container cap will pop out by itself. To close the container, Turn the knob to the open position. Now hook the small latch on the container cap into the back plate. Press it down all the way to the stop, hold the pressure and turn the knob from the open to the lock position. The easiest way to do this is by placing the flash on a hard surface. The battery container provides space for four batteries. Insert them as instructed on the marking on the inside of the container and pay attention to correct polarity. It is easy to check the camera compatibility of the flash. As soon as you switch on your device, the display will show the firmware release. If there is a dot after the number, the flash is prepared for a Canon camera. If this dot is missing, the electronics is ready for Nikon. With this flash, you have the option to choose from different manual power levels. 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and 0 0.16. Additionally, you have four programs or modes to choose from. In order to change from one mode into another, the main knob needs to be switched from 0.16 to mode position and back again to 0.16 within a half second. The mode change is indicated by different colors of the ready LED. As soon as the mode has been changed for the first time, the new mode has to be selected within 5 seconds. If these 5 seconds are exceeded, the flash has to be switched off and on again in order to select a new mode. For security reasons and in order to draw attention, the flash is equipped with a security SOS function. With the power switch on the SOS position, a true SOS Morse signal is generated. For DTL mode, set the main switch to ON DTL. In case of a possible underexposure, the flash will emit an audible alarm. In this setting, the LED is red. You have different manual power levels to choose from. 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8 and 0.16. In all these settings, the LED remains red. To enter slave mode, switch the main knob from 0.16 to mode position and back within a half second. The red LED will change to green, then select the desired power level. For this mode, a fiber optical cable needs to be connected. 
Then switch the main knob twice within a half second from point 16 to mode position and back again to point 16. The red LED will change to a red blinking light. After that, select the desired energy level. For this mode, switch the main knob three times within a half second from point 16 to mode position and back again to point 16. The LED will show a blinking red-green light. The display, however, will not show numbers, as seen before in the manual setting, but a series of lines. These lines and their position correspond to a TTL exposure compensation. If you are using a Canon camera, please follow the instructions. First, connect the flash and the housing with a synchro cable and switch on the camera. Then switch on the flash and wait for the ready LED. Now activate the camera by gently pressing the shutter release. In order to activate this mode, switch the main knob from point 16 to mode position and back to point 16 within a half second. Repeat this action until the ready LED changes color to orange. If this does not work, press the shutter release again to establish a connection with the flash. The pilot light function is activated with the main switch by turning it from the on position one step forward and back within one second. When repeating this action, you can choose from low power, full power and off. Open the Velcro fastener of the neoprene cover and set it down with the opening facing upward. Now insert the flash from above and close the fastener. Adjust the cover in a way that the cable connection and the ball match the cutouts. Always ensure that sockets and connections are clean and be sure to check them before every dive. We suggest you grease your o-ring sparingly with the Seachem grease delivered with the flash. To take off an o-ring, you can use the Seachem pick or another blunt item. Sharp tools can damage the sealing surface and the o-ring and threaten the correct sealing of the device. Avoid any contact with the metal parts when removing or mounting the o-ring. After a dive, rinse your flash with fresh water and dry it thoroughly before opening the battery container.